Hi there everyone and welcome back. In this video I'm going to show you how the one-to-many relationship models in web APIs work. We're going to start by creating a model, then we'll modify a bit the data transfer objects and we will handle the methods as well. This project I will work on is the project for the CRUD operations in web APIs and you could watch that if you're not familiar with them, but if you are you can just keep on watching. So we can just go to the models and see that we have a user model that we connected to a username model before in the previous video. Now we're going to need to add another model so that we can make a one-to-many relationship model. So uh, we will create one post model. So one user can have multiple posts, but one post could be only associated with one user. And for the post model, uh, I'm going to create, I'm going to need an int ID property. And then I'm going to need something like a string property for the content of the post. So this could be like a tweet or something, a comment, or I mean, something similar. And I'm going to make the content nullable. So it could be null. And the last thing I need to do here is just to connect the post model to the user. So I'm going to need an int user ID property and the user property, uh, which I'm going to name user. And here above, I'm going to need to write the data annotation to specify the foreign key, which is going to be the user ID. Uh, here in the user model, now I'm going to need to connect the user to this post model. So I'm going to write here public list. So user can have a list of posts. And I will name them posts and I will make them nullable as well because sometimes the user maybe hasn't posted anything. And each time we create a new model, we need to go to the context of the application here. And we're going to need to specify a DB set instance for the post model. So DB set post and I'm naming it posts. And we can go to package manager console and add the migrations. Uh, we can give them the migrations a name, like uh, one to many, to know that we did these migrations when we added the one to many relationship model. And now we can just simply update the database. Okay, is it done? Now it's done. Uh, we can go to the DTOs. We can go to the, this user uh, username DTO that we had created in the previous video here. So this is the, how the data will be shown to us. And what we can do here, we can uh, add this uh, posts property from the users so that we will see uh, for each user the posts that the user have. So I'm just adding it here. And I'm actually going to rename this because this is not really a good name. I'm just naming it user display DTO. So, and I'm clicking here. Yes. So that this name will be changed everywhere where we had used that DTO. So the function we have created here was to turn users into user DTOs because we would need to do this in almost every method below. But now that we also have other DTOs, we can do this process inside the methods, just like we will do now inside the get all and get by the methods. So we don't need to make a modification to the add method. It's okay how it is in the delete method, delete method as well. So we will only modify the get all and the get by ID. So here we need to add another line.
we will take from the users in the database the u.posts. So we'll take the posts for each user and we can click on to list to list all of the posts that the user can have. So here uh, in this method, when we look through the users in the context and we create the user display DTO, we will just assign to the posts of this DTO each user's posts. Okay, so we can do the same thing here when we get only one user. So it's a similar process, just getting for that one user the posts of the user. So it should be uh, pretty much fine. Now with the methods. So what we can do now is to go to SQL Server Management Studio and create posts because we haven't created any posts and we can associate these posts to the users that we have so that we can see how the data will be displayed then. Okay, so we click connect and we just need to find our database for the project, which was this CRUD API data, as I remember. And then just see the users firstly. So click on edit top 200 rows. Okay, so we only have one user here. Uh, didn't just create one more just so that we can see more than one user. So I'm giving it a name, Ian Parker or something. Okay, let me just remove this. So Ian Parker. age of 20, a personal number, and I'm connecting it to the first username because I don't think I have another username. But let me just go to the usernames and do this correctly and create another username actually, it would be better. Okay, so I have only one username here and I'm making another one, Ian Parker, and I'll connect it to the 1002 was the ID of the second user, as I remember. So let me just go here and specify here the username ID and set it to two. Okay, uh, let me just go to the posts now. And okay, here I'm gonna create a post in the content I can just write like a first post something. So I'm setting the ID to two and I'm connect, creating another post, like a second post and connecting it to the user with the ID of 1002. This looks fine. We can just go uh, around the project and see how this data will be displayed in our web API. Okay, we have here the Swagger UI and we can go to the get users endpoint, click on try it out and execute. And here we'll see the two users that we have. We see how the posts are displayed. So we see that we have displayed the ID of two, content, first post, and then the user ID of two. And we have all of the, uh, we have the details for the post for the second user as well. We can go and try this in the get uh, to get a specific user. And we can see how the data is displayed for a specific user. But sometimes, I mean, maybe you would not want to show all of this data for the posts of a user. So like the ID of the post and then again, the user ID. So we can go and modify actually the user display DTO. So we won't display a list of posts, but we can just display a list of strings, for example. And the strings will display the post content. I'm naming it post content. And we can go to the user service to uh, modify the methods. So in the get all methods, we will need to specify the post content. Uh, property uh, and set this to you that posts that select from the posts 
of the user will select only the content so p goes to uh, p.content so for each post that the user has we will just display a list of all of the contents of their posts the same thing we're gonna do for the get by id uh, for the get by id method and we can run the application and check now okay we we'll, uh, uh, try it out execute and we'll see a list of the users that we have and here we see that uh, only the content of their posts are displayed. But we can go to SQL Server Studio and add another post, for example, to the first user. So like third post, and I'm connecting it to the user with the ID of two. This way we can see how the data will be displayed when a user has more than one post. So let me just run the application and go to the Swagger UI, refresh it. And if we see here, we'll get data for the user with ID of two. We see here in the post contents, we see here the first post and the third post, which are the name of the contents of the post that this user has. So yes, that was how one-to-many relationships in web APIs work in ASP.NET Core. I'm also going to show you the many to many relationships in the very next video. So make sure to subscribe for more and thank you so much for watching.